Hey, hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day out there. And welcome to episode three of the Stretchy Header Tutorial Series. In today's video, we are going to introduce some blur effect inside of our application. But before I talk about that, why don't I show you where we left off in episode two. And basically on the left side of our application over here, if we run our current project, we are left with a UI collection view controller, which is over here. And as we drag down on our collection view, you'll see that we implemented a stretchy header layout, which is this class right here, that allows us to change the frame of our header. And as the frame is changing, the image inside of it enlarges as you drag down. So all of that code is right over here. If you want to get caught up with today's episode, make sure to check out episode two using a link in the description below. All right, so having said all of that, why don't we take our enlarging effect right here and kick it up a notch by providing some blur effect, sort of like what you're seeing on the right side finished version of our application. And it looks pretty nice as you drag down, you'll see the blur effect slowly intensify as you kind of drag it downwards. And as you let go, it reverts back to its original state right over here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And I would like to show you how to do that right now. And let's see, where exactly do I want to start in today's video? Well, why don't I show you first how to introduce a blur effect inside of your header? And you know, this is pretty simple. And I guess everything is relatively simple once you understand how it's, uh, how it's done. So first thing I'll do is go into my header view and I'm going to introduce my blur here. So here is my blur. And I will introduce it inside of a function, which will make our code a lot cleaner. So introduce our setup visual effect blur. And this is just a very simple function that I will create. Make sure to isolate your code into functions like this. And uh, you'll be a lot better off. OK, so setup visual effect blur. What do I want to do in here is to set up some kind of visual effect view. And let me just type out this class. It's an object that implements some complex visual effects. And you know, a lot of these uh, UI kit classes are pretty confusing until you see the actual effect. We will construct it using this constructor, the effect you have to provide by yourself. So there are a lot of different effects that you can use. I'm going to use a UI blur effect. This guy comes with a style and you can pick any of these styles here. I guess I'll use a regular. You can try out the other effects if you really want to uh, if you really wanted to see the variations. And so let me take the blur effect here and pop it into that parameter. And so now you have your visual effect view and what do you do with it, right? Well, it's very simple. All you have to do is to add in this visual effect view inside of your header. So again, this is the header view class, which is this up here. And you just need to say add sub view. And visual effect view is just like any other view. You want to add it, and then you want to either provide a frame or either use uh, auto layout anchors to fill out the entire uh, header view with the visual effect. Now, once you do this, you'll pretty much get the, uh, the header to blur out anything that's underneath the visual effect view here. And we currently only have this image view underneath the visual effect, you know, underneath it in terms of the Z index. And so that's kind of why it's blurred out. If you add something like a label, it'll actually blur out the label as well, as long as the label is underneath the visual effect. Okay. And that's pretty much how you add in this blur here. And now the question is, how exactly do you get the blur to intensify? kind of manually as you drag up and down your collection view, right? So that's kind of the tricky part. And it took me a while to, you know, scour the internet and figure out how this is done. And it turns out it's actually quite easy. And the only thing you need to do is set up something called a, a UI view property animator. And again, this is kind of hard to explain unless you kind of see the code here. So let me set up an animator as an instance variable and this will be easier for me to control later on. Let me say var and let this animator be of type UI view property animator. And it's a class that animates changes to views and allows the dynamic modification of animation. So pretty powerful stuff or pretty powerful stuff there. 
you want to just set this as an implicitly unwrapped property like so. That's kind of what this bang means. And inside of here is where I will try to set up my animator. So as I'm setting up the visual blur effect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate it using this animator somehow. And this is kind of hard to explain, so let me just type out the code here. I'm going to set my animator equal to a UI view property animator like so. And you can construct this using a couple of these constructors. And there's a lot of different options, but the easiest one you want to use here is the duration curve and animations. So let's use a duration of something like three seconds. And this guy, you want to probably use linear. You can use the other ones, but linear will be better for you to control your little blur effect like so. And now you have to provide the actual animations that you want to control. So you can treat this area as the end state of your animation. And what I will do is I will simply cut all that code and put that in here. Okay, so pretty good stuff. And if you try to run this, I don't think you'll get anything to come out. I believe you need to say self that at subview. You might want to use a weak self uh, somewhere instead of here to prevent a retain cycle. So I think you might want to do something like weak self and in. And this guy, you probably need a question mark like that. Okay, so when you run this code, you don't really get anything to happen or you don't really see the effect at all inside of your header here, right? And the reason is because the animator hasn't started yet. And what you need to do is call animator. And uh, why don't we start this bad boy by saying start animation. And so once I run this, it'll try to set up the visual blur effect. It's going to start this three second animation like that. And as you can see over time, the blur intensifies. And when it reaches three seconds, it's going to uh, become the blurriest effect, kind of like what you're seeing right here. And that's pretty much how it works. Uh, this animator guide, you can do a lot of different things with it. Uh, one important property that we'll use is this thing called fraction complete. So this is a property that ranges from zero to 1.0. You can think of it that way. If you use 0 0.5, it's going to be a uh, half blur, <laughs> I believe. So let's kind of see what that does. You get this half blur effect here. Okay, so that's how this fraction complete works. And we're going to be using this fraction complete in combination to the offset of our, of our collection view, kind of like what we did for the image up there. So let me just remove that because I don't really want the half blur. I'm going to run my application again. And let's go back to our strategy header controller that renders out our cells down here and also our header view up there. And as you can see, right, the header is totally non-blurred out, which is a good default state. And so as I drag down on my collection view, I need to kind of know how far I'm dragging down. And so you kind of see that I set that up inside of my header layout in the last episode using this collection view and this content offset guy. And I guess in addition to that, you can track the content offset also inside of the controller itself, which might be a little bit easier. And I will show you how to do this right next to this function called view for uh, pretty much your header is what that's doing. So I'm going to say scroll view did scroll. This guy is going to be called every time you scroll your collection view. And as you are scrolling, you can say let content offset y equals the scroll view content offset dot y. I believe you need to provide an override here. And why don't we just print out the content offset y just so that you can see, you know, what exactly this value is down in the console below. So as I drag down, you'll see that it goes down in the negative direction all the way on the console there. So it starts off as zero. Scroll down, goes into the negative, very similar to what we saw in the last episode. As you go upwards, it goes into the positive direction. So that's pretty much how this content offset works. And now what I'll do is I'll use this content offset and also the animator inside of my header view, this animator, uh, let's see, this UI view property animator. I will use the fraction complete property on this guy to give it the steady gradual blur as you drag downwards. 
So a lot of good stuff here. And, you know, you have to be somewhat comfortable with applying math in your coding projects. And uh, I actually got a major in mathematics. So this is why I really enjoy uh, setting up my UI with mathematics. And so let me show you how this works here. I'm going to access my header somehow. So I really need to do something like header animator dot fraction complete equals some kind of fraction value. You know, this is what I want to do. And again, I don't really know how to do this just yet. So why don't I show you how to access the header inside of my application here. And the easiest way to access your header, which is rendered out inside of this method called view for supplementary element of kind. It's this guy here and also here. You want to access it, but uh, you don't really have this variable from within this scope of this function. So what you can do is you can grab a reference by setting up a local instance property on your class and you can say header view. And let's see, what I want to do is I'll declare it as optional just so that it starts off as nil in the beginning. And then why don't I call this guy header view? Maybe that makes more sense. And I'm just going to replace this here. And this header view, you need to cast it into a header view at the very end there. That should be okay. And then finally, you need to return this header view here. So I'm just hitting command B to build my project. And then lastly, this guy needs to be a non-optional. So this is an optional here. And you just want to unwrap it with the bang. And uh, that looks blue, everything looks okay. And now what I can do is, inside of the scroll view did scroll, right? I can now access the header view, which is this guy that I set up inside of this method here. And then I can actually access the animator as well. So maybe I'll do this again. So header view dot animator dot fraction complete is what I want to do. Let me just set it to 0 0.5 and show you what kind of effect that will have on the header that I render on the top here. So if I drag down, you'll see that the immediate effect of 0 0.5 blur is now applied to my header view. So that is a hard coded 0 0.5. And obviously we don't really want 0 0.5, but we want to slowly animate the blur up to its final value like so, dependent on this content offset Y guy. So as you can see, the content offset is this value from zero to let's see, negative 200 ish, which is down there. And I'll show you what the math is going to look like. I'm just going to use the absolute value of content offset Y. And I'll divide it by 100 to get me a decimal value. So this guy is going to be negative and absolute value brings it back to positive. As you scroll down like that, you'll get your visual blur effect to gradually blur out at the very top there. And uh, once you let go, you'll see that as the content offset Y goes back down to zero, it takes the decimal value of the fraction complete and brings it back down to zero as well. That's pretty much how the animation works for your header view. Okay, so hopefully this math isn't too hard to follow. I guess it's just the conversion of the content offset y to a decimal value. Uh, one problem that you have to be aware of is if you drag up like that, the header will also blur in the upward positive direction. And you know maybe this is an effect that you want to apply to your header. If that's something that you want, you can just leave your code as is and then everything's going to be good to go. Uh, but however, that's kind of what I don't want. And instead, I would like to keep the default state of my header view as I scroll up like that and make sure it is not blurred out. And the way you do that is to just catch the content offset while it's in the positive direction of over here and then just kind of ditch the code below. So what I'll do is I'll check the content offset Y. If it's greater than zero, we just hit return. And uh, you know you will abandon this code over here and you won't actually modify the animator at all. So what you'll do is just drag up. You'll see that the state of your animator is perfectly non-blurred out like so. And that looks pretty good. Uh, one little bug that you'll notice is if you drag down like this and you drag up quickly, it keeps the blur or it keeps the blur kind of like blurred out like that. You see it's a little fuzzy. And if you want to fix that bug there, 
you want to make sure that you set the fraction complete back to zero. So what I'll do is I'll copy that, set it to zero, and once I'm beyond the zero point for content offset Y, you'll see that you bring it back down to zero, which means that the animation is not in any animated state, so it's just at zero. And then you fix the blur to be perfectly, you know, not blurred just like that. Alrighty, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. If you want to download the source code for today's lesson, then make sure to head it down in the description below. If you want to support me and everything that I do on this channel, you can check out the couple of courses in the description below as well. It really goes a long way in helping me do what I do on this channel. And finally, in the next lesson, I'll probably wrap up this entire series by showing you how to render out this gradient layer and also this label on top of our header image view. That's going to be it for today. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye, guys.